Hey Gloss, I'm going to do a quick video for you on mutations, what they are, how they happen, uh, and whether or not you have mutations. So you're not going to be able to throw webs like Spider-Man does or get super strong like Bruce Banner, but you actually do have mutations, and I'm going to go into what those might be. Um, but a little backing up, you need to know what is DNA. So DNA is inside of every cell in your body. And particularly, it's inside of the nucleus of every cell of your body. It's normally bundled up into these shapes called chromosomes, but when it's expanded out, it makes this beautiful shape that we call the double helix, which is one of the most famous pictures in all of science. And if you look at just a small part of that DNA double helix, you are looking at a gene. So a gene is a small part of that DNA, and what it does is it is the blueprints to make proteins, which I'm going to go into, what a protein is. So the DNA, if you were to unwrap it, it actually has specific, uh, what we call base pairs, that are a code that your body can actually read to make things. In the same, the same way that when you're building Legos, you might actually read a code to actually assemble the Lego in a particular way to make something beautiful out of it. Um, these proteins are really important because they're molecules that actually do so many things in our body for us. For example, your skin is made of a protein called collagen. Uh, your hair and nails are made of a protein called keratin. That's, a, that's another protein. We have a protein called hemoglobin that moves, uh, that moves oxygen throughout the body. We really need it. Uh, we would die without it. And we have a protein called insulin that helps our body to regulate metabolism. These are just four out of the roughly 80,000 to 400,000 different types of proteins in our body. So we really need them. How your body actually makes them, and I got this graphic from the wonderful YouTube channel stated clearly, is first, the DNA, which has that code, needs to be ripped open and copied. We call that transcription. Uh, the DNA is copied into a single-sided strand called RNA. And then this RNA, which is a lot smaller, it's free to actually be fed inside of a ribosome that this GIF is showing really nicely. And then the ribosome is the factory and it actually builds the proteins from building blocks that we call amino acid in much the same way that you can take Legos and assemble them to make a tower. So our ribosomes take the RNA, they read it, it's like the directions, and they can actually build a protein out of those directions and they use the amino acids to do that. So this is how we actually get proteins. So now let's get into how, how mutations actually come into this. So we have our DNA code and the ribosome can read this to make proteins. What can happen is that sometimes this code can be wrong. There can be a change in that code that is a mistake. And so any change that is in this code is going to affect our ribosome's ability to actually make these proteins because it's supposed to be reading the directions and saying, insert this amino acid here to make this particular protein. So if something is wrong, then it's going to make a mistake. So a mutation is just our word for a change in the DNA, uh, in the DNA sequence of an organism. So a change in this code. It can cause a change in a single gene or in a whole chromosome. I'm going to focus on this in just the single genes. So it can be caused by three, these three main ways. Insertion, deletion, substitution. So if you think of our DNA letter and you think of reading these particular letters, imagine that one letter was just swapped out for another one. In the same way that you say you're reading the directions of how to make Legos, and you swapped out one word for how you're gonna make this Lego, so instead of inserting the red brick, inserting the green brick. That would cause a problem, because now you're putting the wrong brick into that spot. So substitution is taking, putting the wrong letter into that code. Insertion means extra letters get jammed in. So you can imagine if you're building Legos and there's an extra word that just says, insert this extra block here, it's gonna mess your tower up. So insertion is when extra letters get put into the DNA code uh, and it causes a mistake when our ribosomes are actually trying to build them. And the third type you can imagine is letters get deleted. So imagine some of these letters here in our DNA get chopped off. Now the ribosome goes to try to build our protein and when the ribosome does that, the letters are not there, and so the wrong sequence is actually assembled. All three of these things will affect the way that a protein is actually built 
because it's going to change how it's put together. So this can cause problems, as you might guess, because if you make a change to the, the gene, you make a change to the way that that protein gets built, and you get a faulty protein. So here's a, here's a nice little, little um, gift from the amoeba sisters. You can see insertion, an extra letter gets jammed in there. Substitution, it's swapping one letter out from what it should be to another one. And then deletion, one letter goes away. So this is showing all three types of, uh, all of the main types of what's called point mutations. So none of these mutations are going to give us superpowers, but they do cause real problems. Uh, and they could cause real benefits too, just not quite so much like you're not gonna uh, become the Hulk. So here's a real problem. It's a disease called sickle cell anemia, and it's literally caused by a single um, uh, amino acid change in the protein that would, uh, and to make the protein hemoglobin, which I mentioned in, our, in the four proteins I highlighted before. So literally, one letter is out of place. That's it. One letter is out of place in your whole DNA sequence, and as a result of that, you end up getting a, uh, a protein that's built in this shape, and this shape is not able to send as much oxygen through the body, so it causes big problems. So this example is a substitution change because one letter has been swapped. So we make this substitution change, and boom, we have a, a change in the protein that was created which can cause problems for us. So not all mutations cause problems, but a lot of them do. Um, over 4,000 diseases are caused by a mutation in a single gene, meaning just a few letters out of place can cause over 4,000 different diseases. Um, another way that this can happen is you can get exposed to the sun and damage to the skin can actually damage your DNA and contribute to aging. And I, I like this uh, example here. This person was a truck driver for many, many years. This side of this person's face faced inside towards the truck. This side of the person's face faced out towards the sun. And you can see all of the damage that the sun did to this person's face. Uh, and that likely contributed to many, many mutations in those genes that would cause the person's collagen to, to function appropriately. So finally, not all mutations are actually harmful. Some are beneficial and some are neutral. And so you could have a beneficial mutation like better camouflage can have a neutral mutation, like these grapes just being a different color. Um, some, a beneficial mutation, like some people were actually born with extra strong, dense bones, um, like that, that some have called like almost unbreakable bones because they, their mutation caused their bones to be really, really dense. Um, there's actually, you can look this up, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of research into this, this topic right here. Some people, um, women actually, only women, can see more colors because of a mutation that's called tetrachromacy. Um, basically, instead of having three cones, you have four, and so it allows certain people to see more colors that are not possible for others. This guy's 105 years old uh, and still running races, so people are looking into mutations that might cause better health in old age. Uh, and then finally, uh, this is actually related to sickle cell anemia. There is a beneficial version of the same mutation that causes sickle cell that actually causes malaria resistance, which is a disease that kills many, many people globally. And you could potentially have a beneficial mutation that makes you immune to malaria. So the key thing here, mutations are often harmful. Uh, I said that they could cause 4,000 diseases, but they are not always harmful. Sometimes they give you an advantage but they are always caused by a change to your genes. Uh, and that is my little discussion of mutations. And I will see you in class. Thank you.